Around 30 million years ago, in a barren desert basin of Mongolia, a giant mammal was on the search for food. Its favorite meal was the tender leaves found at the tops of the tallest branches, which it could reach thanks to an unusually long neck. We call this animal Paraceratherium, and it was one of the largest land mammals ever to walk the earth. Today, the biggest living terrestrial mammal is the African elephant, but Paraceratherium was no elephant. In fact, it was a kind of rhinoceros, though you would hardly guess that from its appearance. Back then, rhinos came in all shapes and sizes. This giant evolved from much smaller ancestors, but it took a different evolutionary path, one that brought both the advantages and disadvantages of immense size. Paraceratherium grew so large that it may have reached the upper limit of what a land mammal could ever achieve. In other words, it might have become as big as a terrestrial mammal can possibly get. So what happened to it? The short answer is that it eventually ran into problems even larger than itself. The first fossils of Paraceratherium were uncovered in 1846 in what is now Pakistan, and additional fragments were soon discovered across Asia. But it was not until 1922, when new remains were excavated in Mongolia, that scientists truly began to understand this animal. From the anatomy of its feet, they identified it as a perisodactyl, an odd toed ungulate that stood on three toes. Today, the perisodactyls include horses, tapirs, and rhinos. But how did scientists recognize that this colossal and unusual beast was a rhino? The answer lay in its teeth. Like modern rhinos, its upper molars had chewing surfaces shaped like the Greek letter pi, while the lower molars had an L-shaped pattern, and Paraceratherium possessed exactly these kinds of molars. The earliest reconstructions based on its fossils gave it a more rhino-like appearance, with short legs and a neck held low, almost parallel to the ground. But as more skeletons came to light, its image changed. It began to look like a cross between a rhino, a giraffe, and an elephant. Like a giraffe, Paraceratherium had a very long neck, around two to two and a half meters in length. Like modern elephants and even sauropod dinosaurs, it had massive, column-like legs to support its enormous bulk. But the proportions of those legs were different. In elephants and sauropods, as they grew larger, the humerus and femur lengthened while the bones of the feet became shortened, compressed, or even fused. In contrast, Paraceratherium had shorter humeri and femora, with longer lower limb bones, proportions inherited from its ancestors that were built for speed. One of its earliest ancestors was Hierakius, a tapir-like herbivore from the Eocene epoch that shared the distinctive pi and L, shaped molars of rhinos. From Hierakius emerged three branches of rhinos, the lineage that would lead to modern horned rhinos, an amphibious hippo-like group that later went extinct, and the group that gave rise to Paraceratherium. At first, these animals were small and swift, but over time, their size steadily increased. For example, Papaceras, which lived about 50 million years ago in China, was the size of a collie dog and relied on its long legs to escape predators. Later, during the late Eocene, Juxia grew to the size of a horse, with a longer neck that allowed it to reach leaves in places other mammals could not. And by the beginning of the Oligocene, around 35 million years ago, giants like Paraceratherium stood between 4 and 6 meters tall and stretched roughly 7.5 meters in length. With its long neck, it could reach heights of 6 to 9 meters, making it the tallest land mammal that ever lived. Paraceratherium weighed between 10 and 15 tons, with the largest individuals possibly reaching 20 tons. This weight limit likely did not stem from bone or joint constraints, but from the biology of reproduction. The larger a mammal becomes, the longer its pregnancies tend to last. The African elephant, the largest living land mammal today, has a gestation period of up to two years. For Paraceratherium, which weighed roughly twice as much, the gestation period may have been even longer. So why did this animal evolve to become so enormous? One reason was protection, since predators would struggle to bring down such a colossal creature. Another was access to food. By growing taller, Paraceratherium could reach vegetation that smaller animals could not. Based on dental analysis, it is known to have fed mainly on leaves, much like modern giraffes. But with a digestive system similar to that of today's rhinos, inefficient at extracting nutrients, it would have needed to consume huge quantities of plant material, 
processed through a massive gut, its long legs also gave it the ability to travel great distances in search of food. Modern African elephants, for instance, consume around 140 kilograms of vegetation daily, can walk as far as 32 kilometers in a single day, and maintain home ranges of up to 1,500 square kilometers. Paraceratherium likely traveled even farther. This mobility was vital during the climatic shifts that began around 33 million years ago at the start of the Oligocene, when Earth cooled and dense forests gave way to grasslands, shrublands and deserts. However, climate change itself may not have been the decisive factor in its extinction. An unexpected cause could have been the arrival of gomphothers, ancient relatives of elephants migrating from Africa. As they fed, gomphothers often toppled trees, transforming forests into open grasslands. This would have further reduced the browsing habitat of Paraceratherium, leaving it more vulnerable to disease and drought. By the early Miocene, this giant rhinoceros had disappeared, leaving only its smaller relatives behind. The crown of largest land animal passed to the elephant lineage, and some species of ancient elephants even surpassed Paraceratherium in weight and possibly shoulder height. Yet Paraceratherium still retains the title of the tallest land mammal of all time. The existence of such giants shows that maintaining enormous size requires a perfect balance of climate, resources, and space. When conditions shift, the giants vanish. But looking at today's rhinos, elephants, and whales, it seems clear that the strategy of bigger is better is one that will never truly go out of style. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel.